We make it cool to be suck. We make it cool to be suck. We make it cool. Hello and welcome. I'm Damon Bruce here with you as we get ready for a little NBA action on two. And there, a bit earlier, the Heat getting mentally and physically ready. Thanks for... And now a quick check of our starting lineups for both teams. First for the Spurs. Arthur and Danny Green are your one and your two. And in the middle, out of Brazil, taking with the 28th pick back in 2008, the 6'11 pivot man, Tiago Spoto. Then there's Kawhi Leonard. And it's Duncan in at the four slot. And for Miami... Chalmers and D-Wade are the guards. And playing at the five, the always versatile 6 11 star big man, able to score inside and out, Chris Bosh. And it's LeBron James. And it's Haslam in a power forward. Miami on defense. Parker drives in. Splitter. Parker with him. Wade picks him up. Parker's shot is off. You know, every great player needs someone to push them to be better. LeBron said last year that, you know, that's what Kevin Durant does with him. And I think he works as hard as he does knowing that Durant is coming to try to take his spot as the best player in the league. Three misses to start the game. Still trying to break the seal on that hoop. Picked his pocket. Green against LeBron. No one near him. And Green gets it to go. Green's got the game going here with the first basket for the Spurs. And going back to LeBron for the time being, he's solidified Clark is standing. I, I think everyone would agree he's the best player in the well, NBA. Well, how about four league MVP trophies to his credit? One of only five players in league history to win that many. One of only a few players to be both MVP of the league and MVP of the finals in the same year. So, enough said. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Kevin, I was able to speak with Eric Spolster for a moment. They'll be up against a future Hall of Famer in Tim Duncan in this one, and I asked him how Duncan changes what they do on the defensive end. He relayed that he told his guys not to be over-aggressive with him in the post, saying, if we start fighting on every fake he throws our way, we'll all be in foul trouble. We can't let that happen. We'll see if they can avoid just that, guys. All right, Doris, thank you very much. Here's Parker. Wade against Leonard. Down low. Got a piece of it. It's stolen by Green. Parker kicks to Green. Back to Parker. And there's the call on James. That's his first foul. Here's Duncan. He kicks to Parker. A finger roll finish at the bucket. That finish brings me back to the old days. The silky smooth finger roll. And what an amazing run it was for the Spurs last year in the postseason. They swept the Lakers, survived Golden State, and then dismantled Memphis on their way to the NBA Finals. And then, of course, were seconds away from another championship banner. They kick it out to Green. But Trey, LeBron grabs the miss. You know, even though he missed that one, great shooters have a way of feeling when they've got enough room to pull the trigger. Yeah, not enough defensive coverage there to prevent him from firing that time. But uh, yeah, I think if he's open, he's got to let that thing fly. Well, getting back to the Spurs, they looked better and better as they went deeper into the playoffs, Clark. Heat were thought to be the heavy favorites at the start of the NBA postseason. But when they met in the finals, uh, thoughts on who would win, I think, were pretty much split. Yeah, and eventually, you know, this was one heck of a series because the Spurs not only had experience and talent, but they had multiple options offensively and did such a terrific job sharing the ball. They took the Miami Heat to the limit, but at the end of the day, it came down to LeBron James and Dwayne Wade rising to the challenge. That one misses. You know, part of being a championship team is having the talent first and foremost, but then managing the minutes of that talent. The Heat, I thought, did a nice job monitoring the minutes of the big three throughout the season and playoffs last year. You know, when he has that basket in his sights, he will go right at it. Once he's in tight, he is a flawless finisher. 
Loris Diaz checked in for splitter. And so here is Miami. As you said, Clark, the big three in their prime, but really, you want them to just get their work in during the season, not exhaust themselves before they make it to the playoffs. I thought, Kevin, along those lines, I thought by the end of last season, Miami was exhausted. And once you try to, to win a third title in a row, the emotional fatigue and exhaustion really becomes a factor. So this is going to be interesting to watch all year. Diaw dishes the puck. Six to shoot. Shot is off. Now the Heat take it the other way. Here's LeBron. The basket drops, and he gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming his way. I'll tell you what, LeBron can absolutely soar in for the finish. I remember last year, the alley-oop in the conference finals against Indiana just almost put his head on the rim. Air Freight is a nickname we could do. LeBron James, I mean, he's an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Defensively, the strength, length, mobility. Uh, he can wall you up and lock you down and put you away. Catching up on the changes with Miami. Chris Anderson has checked in for Bosch. Allen comes in for Dwayne Wade. And it's Norris Cole in for Mario Chalmers. Bonner kicks to Dion. Let's the three fly. Cole with the rebound. Coach Popovich was fine last season for sitting out his top players in a nationally televised matchup against the Heat. I certainly understand the league's posture there, and it was a lot said about it. Yet, for a veteran team like the Spurs with championship aspirations, I understand resting key players during the course of the regular season. Bellinelli off the pick from Ginobili. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. And back to that fine for Popovich, a quarter of a million dollars. Steve, that'll be the dent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, you know, Popovich enjoys tweaking the league at times. Uh, this was clearly an effort to do that. But, uh, look, I think it's it's good for him to, to actually, you know, kind of let the league know every once in a while. That if you're going to give us that kind of schedule with my older team, I'm, you know, I'm going to sit them down once in a while. Well, when you have the best record in the league, you're going to be the most dominant, one of the most dominant teams at home. The Heat just destroyed people down in Miami, and only the Denver Nuggets had more wins at home than the Heat did. And how crazy is that from the Heat to win as many games as they did last season, but still be second in the league in home wins? Still were far and away number one home in the East. Well, yeah, the Knicks were the closest to a team in the East, but they still had six fewer wins at home than Miami, but the Heat really just did what they had to do to put themselves in position uh, to go on to their second NBA title in a row. All right, well, look at how the hustle game has been going for the Spurs. Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals in the early going. And the other thing they're doing is forcing a lot of turnovers, and that's helping them to get easy points at the other end. Parker outside. Inside, Bellinelli gets the bucket. The Heat trail by five. LeBron passes to Allen. Will it go? Offensive rebound. Here's Anderson. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Nice work to get inside and draw the foul. Yeah, it's obvious. The defense not going to allow many easy layups. They're going to make you earn it from the line. Miami shooting their fourth and fifth attempts at the free throw line tonight. No good on that one. You know, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last season, guys, was that they were able to finish games strong. You think a group of vets might run out of gas, but the opposite was true with this group. They turned it up down the stretch and were one of the most productive teams in the league in terms of fourth quarter points. And the second free throw, good. Well, Clark, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last year in the fourth was because they have so many options when possessions, you know, Steve, start getting critical and the game is tight. Well, no question. You've got Parker to create off the dribble. You can always throw it into the low post to Duncan. Uh, but on top of that, you've got a roster full of guys who understand how to play the game and, and know how to play each other. 
Just the experience that this group has gained together over the years, I think, allows them to execute under pressure. That free throw, no good. And he's good on the second. He did the important part at the line there, the heavy lifting, if you will. Made this a two-possession game. Three seconds separate the shot clock and game clock. Hey, Heat moving the ball around. LeBron outside. Patty outside. He feeds it to Anderson. Right through the knee for the layup. Yeah, they're going to need some help there defensively. That matchup is going to be a tough one to deal with. And Bellinelli kicks to Diaw. He dishes it to Bob. With one on the clock. What a play! He simply trains it in at the buzzer. Pretty shot without a second to spare. That can be so demoralizing for the team that gives up a shot like that to close out a quarter. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. It's San Antonio. They lead by five. Back after this from the American Airlines Arena. Welcome back, everyone. We're ready to get going again as this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports continues. Players are topped off with Gatorade, hydrated, and ready to get going again as well. And taking a look at San Antonio's performance here, Clark and Steve, uh, what have they been doing or, or not doing? Well, I'll tell you what, I like what I've seen from this club defensively. They're forcing a lot of turnovers with their quick hands and ability to play the passing lanes. Well, you talk about quick hands, but I think it's the mindset of being aggressive and then obviously being active with the hands, tracing that ball so you can come up with deflections that may lead to steals. And Doris Burke has a report for us from the sideline. Well, as you know, gentlemen, Greg Popovich is one of the foremost practitioners of the intentional fouling that sends four free throw shooters to the line. Not exactly a fan favorite, and Pop says, quote, I think it's ugly, I think it's awful, but it's legal, it's there. If somebody doesn't want to get hacked, they should shoot free throws better. Guys, he's all about winning. Whether it's pretty or ugly, he doesn't care. They wear you down, Doris. Thank you so much. Now, here's Dia. He's guarded by Haslam. Splitter. It's good. The assist that time from Dion. And the Spurs lead by nine. Well, here it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great position inside. Yeah, getting the ball into the post should be their first option every time down. Force the defense to adapt and adjust. And that one's good. Parker. Parker's got nine points. All the points these defenders are allowing inside is inexcusable. That's five baskets in a row, and they've all been practically laying. Yeah, they've got to harden and toughen up down there, guys. And Miami calls their first time out of the game. Only three teams in the entire Eastern Conference had a better than 500 record against the West, and no surprise the Heat were one of those three, and they were dominant against Western Conference opponents all year long. Looking at who's out there now for the Spurs. Tim Duncan, he's checked in for Dion. And Kawhi Leonard subbed in for Bellinelli. Left side, Bosch. Tried to back it in, but he misses. Mark, adding on to what you were saying about the Heat versus the West, they ended up 25-5, and five, which is incredible, Steve, given how many tough teams that are in the Western Conference. That's amazing, Kevin. They had a better record against the West than they did against the East in terms of their winning percentage. So I, I think that speaks to just how motivated Miami was when they went out on the road to the West in particular uh, to really show everybody how good they were. And some changes here for the Spurs. Green comes in for Mono Ginobili. And it's Bellinelli in for Tony Parker. Quarter number two. We're about two minutes in. Here's Bellinelli. Back to Leonard. Launches a three. And yes, sir, that one drops. Leonard's got himself on the board with three there. Well, Kawhi Leonard is a do-it-all type of player. I mean, defense, rebounding. His role on the Spurs hasn't been that of a big-time scorer. But he is efficient scoring the basketball. He's just the kind of player 
that helps you win games at a high level. And out of bounds as the Spurs gain possession. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Quarter two and just under two and a half minutes gone by. And for the Spurs, a team with plenty of scoring. You know, do, do you think Kawhi Leonard, as we kind of circle him here, could become a big-time scorer in the NBA? I don't know because it's a much different deal to play off of other people or being the center of attention yourself. And right now, Leonard is in a, a terrific position playing off of Parker and Duncan and Ginobili. The Heat trail by 16. The pass to Cole. Wade outside. The dish to Cole. And there's the feed to Allen. Wade guarded by Green. Here's Bosch. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, coming off a title last year, you always wonder if a team will maybe relax a little bit. They usually won't admit to it, but Chris Bosch readily said it at times that uh, his team had a difficult time lighting that fire again. No good on the free throw. Let me go back to what Bosch said. I think that is true for every team, Clark, that comes off a championship, but they usually don't admit it like Bosch did. Well, you know what? Once you've won it all, there is a bit of a relief and a little malaise that may settle over you, but I've always respected Bosch's candor. He's a guy who doesn't bite his tongue, and he articulates what he feels, and I, I think it's impressive that they fought back to the finals once more because that shows they eventually did recapture that fire. Bellinelli with the three. It's hauled in by the Heat. Green dishes to Bellinelli. Gives him the lead pass. And it's slammed in by Splitter. You know, he may lack grace, but his length makes up for it. He can still throw it down now. Well, you don't have to be a fantastic leaper when you're his size. Well, it's too bad because with a little more athleticism, can you imagine how dangerous he'd be underneath the boards? And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Guys, Kawhi Leonard, the Spurs' highest draft pick since Tim Duncan, and he has been a starter from his first game in the NBA. Coach Popovich says he's really a special player at both ends of the court, and what makes me so confident about him is that he wants it so badly. He comes early, he stays late, and he's coachable. I think he's going to be a star and the face of the Spurs. Big praise from a coach not known for hyperbole, guys. Well, Doris, it's hard to put a ceiling on him. He does have star potential. And as you might expect for the team with the second-best record in the West, the Spurs dominated the East last season, played each team twice for a total of 30 games, and went 25-5 and five in that stretch. And, Clark, back to what you said about the Spurs and the East, it was far and away the best record against the conference, Steve, for a team in the West. Yeah, the second-best record was Memphis with 22 wins. So kind of scary to think that they rested their big stars a few times against teams in the East, and they were still able to put up that kind of a record. And the first one at the line is good. Well, Miami stormed through the regular season and were viewed as the clear-cut favorites to come out of the East, but it was not as easy as expected after sweeping milwaukee the bulls gave them a scare then the pacers really took them deep all the way to game seven of the eastern conference finals so he hits one of two from the strike and for the heat the pacers were their first real test it seemed and they had to survive a win or go home against him it almost seemed clark to take away any momentum they might have had when they went up against the Spurs in the finals. You know, it's interesting. When I think of momentum in the playoffs, it doesn't carry over from game to game or series to series. I think each game, Kevin, is really an entity in and of itself. That said, Miami found a way, despite being pushed by the Pacers and being pushed by the Spurs, both to game seven. It came down to LeBron James' brilliance, but also the hot shooting of a complimentary role-playing winner. Shane Battier. That's good. Splitter's got six points. He's done a nice job, a great job, actually, of finding efficient shots here in the second. Shooting percentage always a function of the kinds of shots you get. And he's on a good roll after struggling a bit in the first. Well, the effort was there, but he just couldn't quite fight his way through traffic. Now here's Barker. He's got nine. Duncan left side. 
Back to Parker. And there's the call on Bosch. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, you know, these calls can be some of the toughest in the game for the officials. It all happened so fast, but I really think that was the right call. The defender was not really set in that situation. Here's what San Antonio is going with right now. DL comes in for splitter. And it's Bellinelli in for Daniel Green. Duncan kicks to Parker. Dishes to Diao. The second chance effort. And it's Miami with the rebound. LeBron's got four rebounds now tonight. Shoots from the right block. That's short off the rim. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Leonard, the pass to Parker. Stolen by Chalmers. Has to wait. Deflected. Diao with the steal. Here's Leonard. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it three. And their shooting really starting to pick up here in the second quarter. Well, the lead being maintained will not be a problem if they keep shooting the way they have so far. And the Spurs making a change here. The Spurs have been successful on three of their four free throw attempts up to this point. Well, this was a very consistent free throw shooting team a year ago. They shot about 79%. And, you know, that just added to their confidence at the offensive end. I mean, knowing that free throw shooting was something they didn't have to worry about gave them a lot of confidence to play freely. A dominating first half of basketball, and so far hasn't been close. It's the Spurs running away with this one. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the third quarter, but right now it's time for the Sprint Halftime Show with Damon Bruce. And now, brought to you by Sprint. Damon Bruce here. Welcome to halftime. So far, a lopsided game out at American Airlines Arena. The Spurs are on a tear right now. They've been tremendous defensively, and that's how you lock a team down. Everything is going right for Tony Parker all over the court against the Heat defense. At the break, 11 points and is up to his usual tricks, dropping a lot of dimes all over the court. For the Heat, they haven't had the same luck. Turnovers, something this team always struggles with, and it's been a problem again. Tough start for D. Wade. He's been far too careless. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. It's been a clinic from Tony Parker. Play created a lot of opportunities for himself in the first couple of quarters, and Tell you what, he, he was be, smart with his shot making too. He really took good ones. You know, points per shot attempted is really one of the undervalued stats in the game, and it's a real measurement of efficient scoring. Here's Haslam dunking with the block. They get it back. They get it again. They shoot again. Haslam, that's good. Haslam's got the first points of the third quarter up on the board for Miami. Here is Parker. Well, really the heart and soul of this Miami team in a lot of ways, Udonis Haslam, born and raised in Miami. He's played his entire decade-long career with the Heat and just a tough, hard-working guy and a locker room leader. Shot clock at six. Parker drives in. No luck. Nice D from Bosch. Terrific job that time defending at the rim. I mean, it's not an easy task stopping that fella when he's headed to the bucket like that. Good job. And the offense continues to struggle. Just one make in their five attempts. Look from Green. They get the rebound. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. He didn't get to that one quite in time, Kevin. Those can be tough to gauge sometimes. And that call gets an instant reaction from the fans. Well, that's a whistle that did not go over very well. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've had a number of empty ones a long time without a basket. they got to find something. You're right. And back to Haslam. He helped lift the Florida Gators program back to prominence. Took them all the way to the NCAA championship game, playing at center of all positions. But was really heavy back then at Florida. And he, he was. He had to lose a, a lot of weight before he was ready to play in the NBA. Went to Europe to play first. He's been the heart and soul of the Heat organization ever since. He misses the free throw. 
You know, the Spurs really have a cohesive culture, and part of that is something that Greg Popovich has been able to do, and that's being able to join guys together that normally might not hang out. For instance, you had Matt Bonner taking Steven Jackson out to a Coldplay concert last season. One way to help guys get to know each other off the court, and it helps them on the court. He hits the second from the line. And back to Popovich and the Spurs, he really makes a point of getting to know his players and have them get to know one another. That's right, Kevin. He, he likes to have his players have a sense of perspective about the world. He, he wants them to know that there are other things going on besides the NBA. In fact, back in 2012, he had the players watching the presidential debates together. And there's the call on Udonis Hassel. That's his first foul. Third quarter of basketball, we're about a minute and a half in. Parker inside, defended by Chalmers. And that one's good, Parker. He's created some good opportunities for himself and made the most of them. The Heat have gone four or five from the field since halftime. Very slow start offensively. LeBron against Leonard. James from down in the low post. It goes. LeBron's got nine points. He's got so much junk in his trunk. He'll find a way to hurt you. Green dishes to Parker. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. Mario Chalmers picks one up. You know, you survey other point guards in the league and ask them who their toughest assignment is, and a lot of them will tell you it's Tony Parker. I mean, his ability to weave in and out at the speed he does just drives would-be defenders mad over the course of four quarters. Parker is always in attack mode. And the first one drops. And, Clark, you mentioned the penetration ability of Tony Parker. He really has become the focal point of the Spurs' drive and, and kick offense, Steve. So fun to watch. Yeah, you talk about his speed and quickness, uh, but it's really all about the overall skill level, the ability to finish it in the lane, uh, the, the knockdown jump shooting, uh, the free throw shooting also improved. But it's incredible how well-rounded Parker has become. Is he the fastest point guard, you think, in the NBA? I would say yes. Hmm. And out of bounds is San Antonio gains possession. Boy, just a brain cramp, guys. I mean, that should have been the simplest of exchanges. Here's Green. He has six. Pass to Parker. Back to Green. For three. And it's good on the assist by Parker. Parker's got his fifth assist in this one. And he's someone the defense has to keep track of at all times because, you know, even when he doesn't have the ball, he moves so well without it, he's constantly a threat to catch and shoot. And another specialty of his is the three ball from the corner. That's his signature shot. And they double him up with LeBron. Shot clock at five. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Matt Bonner, he's checked in for San Antonio. For San Antonio, they've gone three of five to start the second half, developing a nice rhythm out there. Parker kicks to Diaw, and there's the call on Bach. That'll be his second foul of the game. You know, Heat head coach Eric Spolster worked his way up from the very bottom in that organization. I mean, he got his start as a video coordinator, and through years of hard work and dedication, has really become an outstanding coach. Bellinelli, he's checked in for San Antonio. Bonner, he's covered by Bosch. Bonner passes to Leonard. And there's the call on James. And that'll be his third foul so far. A different look for Miami. Chris Anderson has checked in for Bosch. Mattier comes in for Udonis Haslam. And it's Allen in for Dwayne Wade. And it's out of bounds to the Spurs as San Antonio retains possession. And back to Coach Eric Spolstra as a guy who got his start as a video coordinator, picking the game apart. Steve, he's very comfortable with the new advanced stat movement, analytics in he the is. NBA. Yeah, and I've had a chance to speak with him quite a bit. He says that the way they use advanced stats is just as a conversation piece 
in the coaching room. Uh, their, their analytics department will bring them various information, and it will force them to ask questions, which is very healthy uh, for a coaching staff to do. Diaw gets a screen from Bonner. Out of bounds, Miami takes possession. A temporary lapse of focus from him on that turnover. It's embarrassing, but on occasion it does happen. Dwayne Wade's checked in for Mario Chalmers. For Miami, they've gone two of six from the field here in the third. Allen for the three. They grab their own miss, and LeBron throws it down. Well, he certainly isn't the one to blame for them being in the hole. He's been on the money with his game. And Parker, here we go. No luck. Will he go the other way with it? You know, Shane Batty was such a great addition for this Heat team. Really a coach on the floor. And since they added him to the mix, guys, guess what? Two straight championships. Here's LeBron and another basket for Miami. They're coming in bunches for LeBron right now. The Spurs have gone three of six in the third quarter, 50% from the field. Now Bellinelli, Leonard with a screen on Allen. And so it's going to be a three-second violation out there on the defense. And Steve, you look at Shane Battier, his ability to cross-match and guard fours down low is one of the keys that enabled the Heat to go small, especially two years ago when they were in the finals. Yeah, and in the regular season last year, it was very successful for Miami. That's why they, they shot those threes so well, because they had the floor spread. Uh, but Battier always willing to take on that challenge physically. The question, though, is when you go against a guy like David West or even Carlos Boozer, it gets tougher. And so in the playoffs, Miami has had to maybe go small a little bit less often. He's a winner, though, isn't he? No question. And the Spurs making a change here. Splitters checked in. Rocket six. And Parker gets it to go. The assist from Duncan. And that's now 17 points for Tony Parker. The Heat have gone four of nine from the floor so far in the third. Wade dishes to Chalmers. Back to Wade. Good ball movement here by the Heat. Allen guarded by Green. And Anderson gets it to go. Anderson's got five. Well, we've seen that more than a few times. An easy bucket in the lane. Yeah, the interior defense simply has been lifeless. And guys, what do you think about the hustle stance for the Spurs? Uh, forcing turnovers. You want to convert at the other end. That's what this club has done. They've been firing on all cylinders in the transition game, too. I mean, they've really run the break well. The first free throw is good. Boy, still waiting for their first miss from the foul line this half. 100% since halftime, is that right? I'm not sure this lead's going away anytime soon if that keeps up. All free throws good from Bellinelli. Chalmers with it. Looking for his first basket still in this one. LeBron kicks to Chalmers. With the lead pass. Here's Wade. It's stolen by Green. Feeds it to Duncan. All alone. Rebound by Mario Chalmers. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Here's Wade. Soft touch off the glass. Not much the defense can do once he gets to the bucket. The Spurs shooting it really well. 54% from the floor. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Here's Bellinelli. He's guarded by Battier. And it's good. Bellinelli's got five points in the quarter. They're straying away from the three-point game here in the second half. And um, that's fine as long as they're on the lead and they're getting good shots. They've decided not to take nearly as many three-pointers in this half. San Antonio making a switch here. There's 14 seconds left to play here in the third. Ginobili kicks to Leonard. That falls nice feed that time for Mono Ginobili. And that's now 11 points for Kawhi Leonard. Five seconds left to play in the third. The three quarters of play all in the books. And this one all but overall.
Welcome back. Fourth quarter action starting up in what has been a one-sided show. Here's Decola. Back to Ginobili. An easy two points on the layup. And here is Chalmers. Allen kicks to Haslam. And he threw the blocking foul. He'll go to the line for two. That free throw, no good. Good on the second free throw. And so it's San Antonio with it. And Joseph kicks to Ginobili. He passes to Diaz. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Boris Diaw from France, really a unique player. I mean, he came into the league, guys, as more of a playmaking small forward. Now he plays at the power forward spot, and he's still much more of a passer than he is a scorer. And he can't get the first one. And Clark, you mentioned Diaw's skill level. Not the biggest or most athletic guy, but, uh, you know, Steve, he's still effective. He's really a, a great basketball player. What I mean by that, just he knows angles. He knows how to use his body to, to create passes and shots for himself. And defensively, he's very effective, particularly guarding the post because of his strength. Anderson. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Talking about Chris Anderson, guys, the bird man. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to fly last season, but he did latch on with a very good Miami Heat team who was in need of some help rebounding, which is his strength. He still can do that and block shots as well. That free throw missing. And the Birdman, a fan favorite from his days in Denver. The tattoos, his kinetic style of play, uh, certainly drawing attention. Well, he's an athletic presence inside at both ends of the floor. Defensively, he can slide his feet and block shots. And offensively, he's a guy who kind of hangs out on the weak side and finishes plays by catching and dunking. Here's Decolo. And the foul called on Rashard Lewis. That's his first foul. And that's just a flat frustration foul right there. Boy, down like they are, he just took it out on his opponent. I mean, you've got to keep your composure. I don't think that was one of his best moments. Catching up on the changes with Miami. Shane Battier has checked in for Hazlitt. And Dwayne Wade is subbed in for Mario Chalmers. Six on the shot clock. No good from Ginobili. Well, those chances are almost always two points for him. I, I guess the defense did what it had to do to bother him. Here's Allen. The rebound by the Spurs. Get back, get back. Here's Decola. Passes it to Bonner. Baseline J on the way. There's the three. And that one's good, Decolo. How about the percentage they're shooting from beyond the arc here in the second half? They have found their groove from deep, Steve. Allen kicks to Anderson. On the wing, Batty. He's guarded by Diaw. Anderson in the post. And that one's drained from the low block. Last quarter of play, about two minutes in now. Now, here's Joseph. Leads him in there. Bonner's shot, good. Great looking bounce pass to set up that play. Heat shooting just 39% from the field, struggling to find that net. Anderson, and foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That one on Ginobili. Chris Anderson, known as the Birdman, possibly because he flies above the rim all the time. He's got a huge wingspan, great reach, leaping ability, blocks a lot of shots down there. 
Birdman has always been great at defense, and as he keeps adding years in the league, you know, it's, it's an ability of his that has never diminished. And that one misses. And the Spurs making a change here. Duncan's checked in. So he can't get either to fall. Well, he's certainly not the biggest name or somebody that strikes fear into the heart of coaches, but Matt Bonner is more than serviceable and knows how to be a thorn in the side of other teams. He just sits out on the perimeter, and when he's open, he knocks down threes. On the wing, Dwayne Wade. Tries to keep it alive. Leaps for it, and out of bounds as the Spurs gain possession. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. And Bonner, the Red Rocket, so deadly with that unorthodox release from the shoulder. Yeah, three-point specialist. He helps space the floor for this great offense. And he's got a good feel, too. Good passer and knows where he needs to be defensively. Duncan with the bucket. It seems that every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. Yeah, they're making the right play. They're working together, and they're just looking for the best shot they can every possession. Let's go, Dwayne! Wade kicks to Anderson. Left side, Anderson. Six to shoot. Chalmers. He tries for three. A rebound by the Spurs. Leonard's got his third rebound on the night. And DeColo kicks to Leonard. Makes it off the glass. He had almost a free run to the hoop that time, Kevin. I mean, that was too easy. The Heat have gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. Lewis passes to Anderson. Offensive struggles continue missing again. Here's Joseph. He's guarded by Battier. Inside two minutes. Inside dos. You know, you always want to try to win the free throw game when you're playing basketball. And the Spurs, while not getting to the line as much as their opponent or as much as they have in the past, uh, they maximize their opportunities by shooting 80% from the strike. First free throw is good. And Clark, what you said about the Spurs at the line, that's what the top teams do. They don't let their opponents get away with fouls and Steve Lee points at the charity strike. Yeah, that's the big thing. You know, over the course of the season, a lot of games get decided by just a couple of points. And if your team is able to make free throws at a high rate, like the Spurs, shooting just under 80% last year as a team, I mean, that's good for a, a, a big chunk of wins during the season. We've got 155 left in the fourth quarter. And Joseph kicks to Leonard. Duncan defended by Anderson. First one falls for him. Both shots good from the strike. 144 and left here in the fourth quarter. Chalmers dishes to Cole. Kicks it to Odin. Defended by Bonner. He feeds it to Anderson. In the air. The stupendous finish and track. Now Joseph. He kicks it to Bonner. He dishes it to Duncan. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. They've been so efficient in the paint in this game. That's an area they've totally dominated. You know, once they ID the edge they had inside, they just continue to attack. Cole, the pass to Chalmers. Now the feed to Battier. The dish now to Odin. It's back to Battier. 
tries again, and the layup is up and in. You see the defense get caught standing around that time, giving up an easy second-chance bucket. Simply need more of an effort on the boards there, Steve. And Joseph kicks to Leonard. Duncan. And Odin pulls it down. Chalmers off the pick from Anderson. Now, here's Chalmers. D right on him. Battier outside. Makes the lead pass. Here's Anderson. Nice pass. Run him to the rack perfectly for the layup. You know, if this had come earlier, they might have been able to get back into it. Yeah, but as it is, too little, too late. Joseph dishes to Duncan. And there's the pass to Bellinelli. Feeds it to Joseph. Outside Leonard. And so it's San Antonio. He's easily taking this one. And this one was such a lopsided victory.